HDRIs can be very useful, but also limiting. So I'm going to show you how to precisely light your scenes with area lights. Hey, what's up? I'm David Aryev, and I'm a 3D motion designer and educator, and I'm gonna help you make your renders better. In this video, you'll learn how to use specific light sources to enhance your renders and draw the eye. Enhance exterior lighting with a combination of HDRIs, daylight, and motivated area lights. Sell scale with smaller pools of light. Use light linking to only illuminate specific objects and avoid front lighting your shots. If you want more ideas to improve your renders, make sure to grab our PDF of 10 tips in the description. Now let's get started. So this might be a controversial statement. If you're lighting with HDRIs alone, you're doing it wrong. You need to stop lighting with HDRIs only. HDRIs are baked lighting solutions, meaning two things. First off, you can only rotate them, and that limits your flexibility. And second, all the light from an HDRI is from an infinite distance away, meaning that you can never go in and light specific objects in your scenes or pull lights closer or further away from those objects. Sure, they can be great if you just need to show off the modeling job you did, like this example of a metallic object lit only with an HDRI. But when your scenes start getting more complex, you'll find that even with HDRIs with a very direct looking sun, your shadows will be super soft and overall you'll get a pretty flat look. That's not to say that this couldn't be what you're going for, like you might want a flat look. For example, this beautiful render by Marius Becker. But my point is that you're limiting yourself if this is the only lighting tool that you use. Let's take a look at this scene from a fun project I did recently as part of my upcoming School of Motion class on digital cinematography. Here's what the scene looks like with just the HDRI as the main light source. It's very flat no matter which direction I turn it. Then here's what it looks like when we add in the sun. Now we get some nice direct light and way more contrast with strong shadows. This is pretty good, but the barn doesn't feel all that inviting in shadow. So here's what it looks like when I add in an area light to fill in the shadows a bit, and then I add a strong highlight to the barn on the side here with another area light. In this instance, because the area lights are a very similar color temperature to the sun, they feel motivated and you don't notice that they're artificial sources. Especially this light on the side of the barn just feels like an extension of the sun. Our eyes aren't that great at immediately determining light direction unless they're insanely well trained, so there's a lot of flexibility here when you're lighting. Without door scenes, the daylight rig can work great alone, but if you combine with an HDRI using this Mix Sky Texture button, you can add in more detail in the sky and the reflections as well. Often I do all my lighting with area lights though. Here's a breakdown of the lighting on this tunnel. Here's what it looks like with just the star map lighting the scene, then adding in the practical lights, and by that I mean the neon lights in the shot that we can see, and then here's a few area lights that are overhead, lighting a few spots down the tunnel, which are invisible to camera. Then here's a few more area lights on the sides to really fill it out. Finally, here's adding in a sunlight, which is another cool look, but not necessary. Now, here's a breakdown of the lighting from my cyberpunk scene. Again, starting with an HDRI doesn't do much. Even if we crank the power, it's just flat. Here's what it looks like once we add in all the neon signs. Then I add in a purple sun, which gives some nice shafts of directional light. And now here's adding in some area lights between the buildings to bring out some of the details in the alleyways and add in some more color. Here's a few additional lights to hit the metal awnings of some of the stores. And now here's some lights to boost the background volumetrics. Then we've got some lights to bring out the interiors of several of the shops. And here I'm enhancing the balconies a bit with some warm lighting, but not too bright or it'll be distracting and pull the eye too much to the foreground. And finally, here's some additional warm, cold, and pink highlights on the walls and awnings. Lighting with area lights can make all the difference in selling the scale of a scene too. For instance, here in the shot from Coco, we buy that this is a huge environment because of the literal tens of thousands of lights going on. When an area is huge, the lights have to be massive too to light everything from a single source. So it's much more natural to see little pools of light here and there with a big scene. For example, here's another scene of mine from the Excision concert visuals I did recently. Here's what happens if we light with just an HDRI or with a couple huge area lights, and it just looks flat. But it looks so much more convincing when we light with a bunch of smaller lights. Light linking can also help improve your renders. And by that, I mean targeting specific lights to specific objects. Here, for instance, these strong lights are meant to focus our attention on the chip in the shot, but they're blasting the floor and it's super distracting. In Octane, I can set my lights to only target this object by creating Octane object tags for the floor and telling it to ignore lights from ID2, for instance. Then I set the area lights to ID2, and this is what we get. Light linking saved me on this project for sure. Now, like I've said before, there really are no rules, and to contradict myself, sometimes you actually can get away with lighting with only HDRIs. 
For example, my dead mouse cart project here was lit with what I'd call stylistic HDRIs. And in this case, I used my buddy Nick Scarcella's Manhattan Nights HDRIs, which are free here on Gumroad. These were taken at night in Times Square and other areas in New York City, so they're mostly dark with neon lights and therefore create a ton of interesting reflections in the car and wet pavement. Another pack that I love is this one by the French Monkey called Fractal Dome Volume 1, and these are some extremely cool looking fractal HDRIs that can be awesome for abstract shots or blending in with star maps as backgrounds, as well as creating unique and cool reflections. As a final takeaway, I would say avoid front lighting your shot. That creates a look like an onboard flash on your camera would and flattens all the detail. It looks amateurish and can wreck your shots, especially if the light is placed close to the same angle as the camera. Front lights from above or slightly to the side look somewhat better, and front lights as fill can be very nice, but when it's the key light, it typically doesn't look great. I'm going to keep contradicting myself though, because here again I can think of one instance where I've seen this work really well. These renders by Sam Tezcan are amazing to me because they look like photos pulled from old albums from the 80s. He intentionally tried to recreate flash photography lighting, and that gives it this authentic quality. I'm not saying that the lighting looks good, but it looks convincingly retro, and that dramatically increases the photorealism of these renders because of how it tricks our brain. By keeping these tips in mind, you'll be well on your way to consistently creating awesome renders. If you want to learn more ways to improve your renders, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when we drop the next tip.